Hey guys, and welcome to my let's play of the Demon Souls remake. My name is Rob, as it has always been. <laughs> Alright, we just finished up Dark Souls 3, and I have thought for a long time, even when I was first recording uh, Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2, that I would love to do a let's play of Demon Souls on the PlayStation 3. I was like, you can't record that, you know, or at least I can't. Because Share Factory obviously is not on the PlayStation 3. Well, then wouldn't you know it, they announced a remake of the original Demon Souls from the ground up. They buy Blue Point, the developers of the remake of Shadow of the Colossus, another excellent game, which. I'll do a let's play of one of these days, probably. But yeah. Let's jump right into this bad boy. Demon Souls is... It deserved a remake, and honestly, I would have been happy with a remaster. I really would have, in the style of like Dark Souls 1. But they went and made a remake of the game, and that is the whole reason I shelled out the money for a PlayStation 5. Not to a scalper bought it directly from Sony, which is what I would recommend to anybody who, who is going to go with, um, who's going to get a PlayStation 5. Let's see, is that... Let me see something. I uh, can't really see my face too well. That is not the... Okay, I'm going to have to... It didn't save the um, character I made, so I'm actually going to have to take the time to adjust this one. This is the model I made for my first character that I just played played around on the game with. But I'm going to make some adjustments here. Look at me. That's a reasonable effect, similarly. But I want to make myself look a little older, a little more aged. Which is what I did, and it did not save. That's disappointing. Probably because I didn't start the game. Okay, let's see. Let's work on the mustache. There we go. Let's adjust the color a bit. Uh, not white, but right about there is the color I've kind of been going with in the other games. I'm just going to keep the same theme that I started with Dark Souls 2. Um... Again, maybe age there we go old man look at my life I'm a lot like you were uh, yeah. that's fine honestly okay uh, what else did I do I changed the eyebrows I want to say I made him look a tad bit more pissed off <laughs> I could do that we'll go with this it's fine Looks like a slight scar over the right eye. Unfortunately, you can't, um... There's, like, different scars you can, uh, choose from. But, unfortunately, at least as far as I can tell, there's no way to move them around. So I have to decide if I want to go with that or... Something a little less extreme, maybe just a cut on the nose. We'll do... Yeah, sure, why not? Big ol' ugly, scarred up face. <laughs> Alright, and otherwise... I didn't make too many other changes. I want to 
let's say I messed around with the eyes just a bit. I think I made them. Can I zoom? Yeah, let's zoom in here. I think I brightened them up just a bit. Which obviously, my eyes don't look like this in real life, but whenever I role play, I like to have uh, like brighter, like kind of grayish eyes. Not completely solid white though. In real life, my eyes are like a bluish green, or a greenish blue, whichever. Secondary color. Yeah, that's that's fine. I don't want to mess around with it too much. That'll do. <clears throat> okay, let's look at the starting gifts. You can start. I can't remember what they are in the original Demon Souls. I really can't. But you have some new stuff for Demon Souls Remake. You can get an elixir, which temporarily increases the rate of stamina. Discovery, you can get five of them. You can get two grass jellies, which recovers some of user's HP over time. You can get an augite of guidance, a stone that radiates a guiding light, and a I'm pretty sure you get that early in the game anyway. In the original, I'm pretty sure you just have it from the get-go. It's not a uh, starting gift. You can get Bright Water, which recovers some of the user's MP over time. I'm not going to be worried about that. I think I'll go with the Providential Ring, because it's a ring and it raises item discovery, and that... That would help me out more than starting the game with consumables, I think. The rest of these are just like fire arrows, soul remains. Serves as bait for these soul stars, so basically like an alluring skull from Dark Souls. Fire bombs, kunais, which are poison throwing knives. Yeah, we're gonna go with the providential ring. Now, what character class am I gonna start as? That's the real question. Let's read through them. A soldier, which is exactly as the name implies, a low-class soldier that always stands at the front line of battlegrounds with high vitality and durable armor equipped for encroaching dangers. This one's perfectly fine as a starting class. You start with a uh, short sword or a broadsword type weapon, decent armor that looks pretty cool, a decent shield. You also start with a spear, so you have two weapons to start off with, not like in uh, Dark Souls, uh, any of the Dark Souls games, you start off with multiple weapons in certain classes, which, yeah, that's how the original Demon Souls was too, uh, stat-wise, you know, decent life, uh, endurance, strength and dex are fine, um, decently high luck, which I'm not, that's a stat I'm not terribly worried about, so I'm probably, I'm gonna skip out on the soldier, but he does look really cool. The knight, which I thought real, I thought long and hard about starting as a knight because I started as a knight in both Dark Souls two and three. Let's have a look. A knight class of a rather advanced area of Southern Boletaria, fitted with sturdy armor and adept at close combat, ready for ensuing situations. He starts off with very balanced stats with a little bit of a focus on strength. And he has a knight sword, good shield, armor, looks like typical knight's armor, It's which means it, it looks really good. I love it. And you also start off with a mail breaker as a secondary weapon with the knight, which the Mail Breaker is actually not terrible in this game for certain enemies. Uh, your damage type in Demon Souls plays an even bigger role in your ability to damage enemies than it does in like Dark Souls 1. The Hunter, which is kind of like what we know as the Bandit class, a specialist at outdoor activities, wields an axe and bow, well served to deal with both manners of danger. Looks cool, has a battle axe. Less strength, oddly enough, than the knight. Yeah, some of the design philosophies with uh, 
Demon Souls is slightly different than that of the Dark Souls games, which is fine. Again, another perfectly fine starting class. The Priest. A soldier of the church that believes in God, in the God of this world. Adept at close combat and can draw upon a restorative miracle. Yeah, your standard cleric with a healing miracle and a mace. Only difference is, <laughs> this one looks a little cooler than the clerics of other uh, Souls games. He starts off with a heater shield. I mean, that's wild. Got the magician, which looks really cool in this game. A commoner that officially learns spells, skillfully commands magic spells with high intelligence to deal with combat afar. So he starts off with a short sword and a basic fire spell and some other kind of spell. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a warding spell, but I'm not 100% sure. So good magic class to start off with. The Wanderer, which is very much like the Wanderer from Dark Souls 1. A lightly equipped soldier that continues an aimless journey. Wills a falchion and a dagger to handle situations requiring quick wits and fast reactions. So yeah, emphasis on dex, this character, and he has a falchion. <laughs> the Barbarian, which starts off at soul level 9. This is not a deprived like, it's not the same as a deprived, with uh, starting off at like even stats or even at soul level 1 or anything like that. A person from a primitive civilization, though lacking in gear, uh, pure strength matched with high health, wielding a powerful club. Yeah, so, you know, if you want a character that starts off with higher strength and vitality, that bonks things with a stick, and doesn't wear clothes, then there you go. Uh, the thief. Thieves are hired by royalty and engage in dirty jobs. It's dirty jobs, somebody's got to do it. Specializes in crafty and indirect tactics over conventional methods. Yeah, so what, what dirty jobs is the thief involved in that require uh, indirect tactics? It's probably a telemarketer. <laughs> uh, the Temple Knight. A special knight that protects the Temple of God, heavily clad and equipped, equipped for crowd control, who draws upon a restorative miracle. This guy looks really cool as well. Even cooler in the remake than he did originally. Starts off with a heater shield, a halberd, a talisman. You know, simple, but very, very good. Good stat layout, especially for min-maxing because his soul level is only four. So, you know, he has very few wasted stats. Luck is seven. Yeah, so the difference between the knight and the temple knight, other than starting equipment. Knight has 10 vitality, 11 endurance, 14 strength, 10 dex, 11 faith. Hmm. Yeah, there's some differences. Less intelligence. Same strength. The Temple Knight actually has higher decks. Huh. That's fascinating. Huh. Okay. Anyway, the Soul Level 1 character of Demon Souls and the best overall starting class for a beginner is the Royalty. A person of royal descent who has officially learned spells commands the spell Soul Arrow with the benefits of a rare ring. Yeah, so he starts off with a buckler and a rapier, but he also starts off with a ring that constantly regenerates magic and Soul Arrow. Soul Arrow is very good in this game. Magic is very good anyway, but when you have a character that starts off with equipment that constantly regenerates magic, you essentially have infinite ammo and you can just shoot your lasers at everything. 
it's an excellent class. It starts off at soul level one, so you can kind of build this character up any way you see fit. He does start off with higher magic and faith, though, so yeah, he's kind of built to be a either a pure magic build or some type of hybrid build, but spells are definitely what he starts off with. That um, the kind of the direction he starts off with, but you can make this character into anything. But <clears throat> I don't want to play the game on easy mode. Not this time. I'm going to go with the Temple Knight. King Alant the Twelfth, by channeling the power of souls, brought unprecedented prosperity to his northern kingdom of Boletaria. That is, until the colorless deep fog swept across the land. Boletaria was cut off from the outside world, and those who dared penetrate the deep fog never returned. But Valifax of the royal twin fangs broke free from the fog and told the world of Boletaria's plight. That the old King Alant had roused the old one, the great beast below the Nexus, from its eternal slumber. And that a colorless fog had swept in, unleashing terrible demons. The demons hunt down men and claim their souls. Those who lose their souls lose also their minds. The mad attack the sane and chaos reigns. Valifax also spoke of the enticing power of the demon souls. Each time a demon claims a human soul, the demon's own soul is invigorated by the life force. And the power of a mature demon soul is beyond human imagination. The legend spread quickly. Mighty warriors lured by the possibilities braved the fisher to breach the accursed land. But none have returned. Pure of the Twin Fangs. Yet the silent chief. Saint Urbain. Skurva the Wanderer. The sixth Saint Astraea with her knight Garl Vinland. And Sage Frake the Visionary. The colorless deep fog slowly creeps beyond Boletaria's borders. Humankind faces a slow and steady extinction. The deep fog will eventually swallow all lands near and far. But Boletaria has one final hope. A lone warrior who has braved the baneful fog. Oh, has the land found its savior? Or have the demons found a new slave? Brave soul who fears not death. I shall guide you to the fissure. So that you may lull the old one back to slumber. Journey to the Nexus is like the tutorial area of the game, and I want to play it, because you can get some good items here. Man, just this game is so freaking pretty. The amount of detail they put into this remake is just absolutely phenomenal. Standard attack. Yeah, I mean, it controls the way... Dark Souls does. It's almost no different. There we go. And I am fat rolling. I'm covered in armor here. 
There we go. Now I can attack a little bit faster. So, um, let's see. At what point can I roll a bit faster? That's not going to do it. What about this? Um, no. Let's see. All right, there we go. Okay. For the time being, I'll keep my armor on. But when I get to closer to the end of the tutorial, I'm going to take it off. So one of the criticisms I've heard about the remake is that in the Lands Between, released in Bulletaria, like you see there's a lot of overcrowding all over the place. And it's like, you know, Bulletaria is, according to the story, hasn't been like abandoned for long. Like there's still people living in it. So it shouldn't look like it's like overgrown with all kinds of stuff, but yeah. I don't know. Doesn't bother me none. I think it's beautiful. Man, just look at look at the lighting effects. The reflection of the water on the ground. Water effects, man. Oof. It's just... I know graphics don't make a game, but they do definitely heighten the experience. Yes. And something to keep in mind, that even though this is a remake, this is the... It's kind of beta Dark Souls, <laughs> in a way. This is the, the godfather of the Souls franchise or the grandfather, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so a lot of things you'll see in this game are ideas that, you know, originated here and made it into the other Souls games. Uh, that Crescent Moongrass I just picked up, that is a healing item. Healing items are exclusively consumable in Demon Souls. There's no Estus Flask or anything like that. There we go, I had to press circle to climb over that. See, there's several enemies in this area from what I remember. Yeah. Calm down, buddy. I love this halberd. That's basically the main reason I went to Temple Knight over the, uh, the regular night. Yeah. I love how the, uh, the regular knight looks as just a knight character, but I mean, Howard. <laughs> That's literally probably my favorite weapon in Dark Souls 1. And since Demon Souls plays so closely to Dark Souls 1, I mean, I'm definitely gonna probably use the Howard a good bit in this game. I don't know what I'll end up using later in the game. I'm kind of thinking I want to go as a strength build with maybe the capacity to cast a few miracles here and there. <clears throat> but, um, I don't know. I might eventually try to main the Dragon Bone Smasher because, you know, big bonk. One-handing the halberd is so slow. But I like that. I mean, that's realistic, though. And then you two-hand it, and it's like... Yeah, that's how the weapon's meant to be. Look at the fat roll. Oh, yeah, I just did a... Accidentally, instead of a kick, you just kind of hit with your weapon in this game. I don't remember that being a uh, very important part to the combat in Demon's Souls, though. And we got our first, um, I'm not sure what you call these guys when I call them the Black Knight. There we go. <laughs> they redid a lot of the uh, riposte animations for the remake uh, originally in Demon's Souls. 
basically the Riposte animations were the same animations as the Hornet Ring Riposte animations are in um, this one. Let's see. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Are you just gonna be stupid until I break your guard or what? But anyway, they redid the animations. The remake. They still do the same damage, but they look incredibly violent. Almost to the point of being comical. I don't mind it though. It's just a funny observation. See what are the R twos like? Spinny spin. There's no charged R twos. Souls that didn't come along until. Well, I guess you could say it started with Bloodborne. But as far as the games with souls in the titles, that was a thing with Dark Souls three. Archers. Archers are a lot more manageable in Demon Souls because they'll shoot at you and then just kind of pause and stand there. <laughs> They don't just constantly shoot, which personally I'm fine with. Alright, let's see. It's a big old pot of, I don't know, Volatarian goulash, I guess. Yeah, okay. Archer. He forgot how to archer there for a second. Get that grass. I don't know what's in that bowl, actually. Mmm. Gumbo. <laughs> A little bit of a longer tutorial than in Dark Souls 1. And there's like a... There's pretty much no exposition until you actually like get through the tutorial so other than the opening cutscene that was there definitely a different story from Dark Souls souls are an important thing in this game they work the same way as they do in the other Souls games as far as being your experience and currency but story wise they serve a uh, little bit of a different purpose which the story of Demon Souls is actually very very interesting I, I like it quite a lot. Alright, here comes the tutorial boss. Um, you can die here and it'll just take you straight to the, um, the Nexus, which is the hub world. Or you can win this fight and get some extra goodies and stuff. So I'm going to try my best to win it, but no no promises, no guarantees. Let's see what happens. Yeah. It's the Beta Asylum Demon. Is 
the Nexus. It holds together the northern land of Boletaria. Thou canst not quit the Nexus, but the five archstones will guide thee to the outer lands. You have died and the Nexus has imprisoned your soul. You cannot escape the Nexus. Yeah, instead of having a hollow form, wait. However, by capturing demon souls, you can reclaim your corporeal body. Yeah, so as I was just about to say, instead of having um, a hollow form and a human form, you have soul form. You'll notice there's kind of a an aura around my character that kind of makes me appear ghost-like. And my health is halved, so yeah. Unfortunately, didn't kill the tutorial boss, but if you manage to kill him, you get some extra healing items and whatnot that are helpful when you start the game. Not essential. And you get to see, like, a bonus death for your character. You still die. You die to a uh, boss that we'll end up fighting in the future called the Dragon God, who's also in the opening cutscene of the game. A humongous, very scary dragon with very many teeth. So... I've been recording for a little bit. It's going to be fairly uneventful first part because I'm going to finish it out with just dialogue. So in the next part, I'll begin the actual first level. For now, I'm just going to do some talking. You know, there's a crestfallen warrior in all three Dark Souls games. Guess where that started? Well, you slipped through the fissure too, did you? You came for demon souls? Or to save this land? and be remembered as a hero. <laughs> Hunting for demons? Try one of the Archstones. Now go. That is why you came, is it not? To this accursed Boletaria. You came for demon souls? Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero? Bah. It's all the same. You're just another prisoner of the Nexus. We're welcome here. As long as we keep slashing up demons. <laughs> <laughs> you came for demons? Uh. We're welcome. <laughs> all right, so yeah, that's the crestfallen knight of demon souls. Uh, let's talk to this fellow. I'm Stockpile Thomas. When the scourge came, I didn't know what hit me. When I came to, I found myself here in this nexus. My wife and daughter fell victim to the demons. But I would be worthless in battle. At the very least, I hope to lend my assistance to you brave slayers of demons. I would be happy to lighten your load and look after any excess baggage. Yeah, so instead of having a bottomless box or a uh, inventory box that's linked to like a bonfire or something, you have Stockpile Thomas, who's an NPC, and he'll organize your storage, which I don't have anything that I really need to put with him right now. But let's talk to him. When the scourge came, I abandoned my wife and daughter and fled like a coward. When I came to, I was in this nexus. I haven't dared venture outside these walls since. I wish I could do more. But <laughs> I am ignorant of the world beyond these walls. Yeah, so we find out Stockpile Thomas is a bit of a coward and abandoned his wife and daughter when the scourge came to the land. I can't help but be sympathetic towards Stockpile Thomas because even though he is a coward who abandoned his family, at least he's able to accept what he did and admit it and be honest about who and what he is so i can respect him for that much my candle maiden cared for me 
during my first days here. She says very little, but has a kind heart. She's just the age my young daughter would have been. Poor, poor girl. Trapped here with her eyes occluded by wax. If only something could be done to help her. If only something could be done to help her. Best of luck to you. All right. So that's Stockpile Thomas. Over here we have... It's not Blacksmith Ed. I forget this one's name. You knew here. Are you here for my services? The name's Baldwin. Baldwin, Just that's an ordinary right. blacksmith. It's simple. Just bring me all the souls you can. In trade, I'll give you weapons. Or forge the ones you already have. With your souls, I can eke out a living. And with my weapons, you can go on living. Not a bad deal, eh? So of course he repairs, upgrades your weapons, you can buy stuff from him, you can buy healing items early on in the game, dagger, short sword, battle axe, heater shield, I would recommend shelling out the souls for a heater shield if you start as one of the classes who don't start with a heater shield because of just how good it is for the weight. It's probably not as good as it was in... Dark Souls 1, but it's like still is extremely good. Cracked Stone Eye restricts health recovery temporarily. I don't know anything about that. A mystical stone that inhibits health recovery. Throwing it produces a large aura. So that's kind of like kind of like a Lloyd's Talisman. I can't remember if that was originally in the game or not. I have a feeling it wasn't. Okay, Ed's Sharpening Stone. A sharpening stone used by Ed, blacksmith of Stonefang. We will eventually meet him. Repairs wear on the weapon wielded in the right hand, restoring its durability. Yeah, thankfully durability is not as big of an issue as it is in Dark Souls 2, but it's probably a bigger issue than in Dark Souls 1, but not by a lot. And if you haven't heard, there's another blacksmith at the entrance to Stone Fang Mine. He's an eccentric old man. He knows his trade well. He's the only sane one left in a town of soul-starved men. If you do meet him... No, forget it. That stubborn old Nidibel will just chase you off. There aren't enough smithing tools in this temple to handle all the work. Only certain ores can be used to forge weapons. But you'll just have to make do. And be thankful that I can do anything for you at all in this forsaken place. And be thankful that I can do anything. No interest, eh? I can tell you're not going to last long here. <laughs> it's all mad because I didn't buy something from him, but I don't think I have enough souls to really buy anything from him anyway. And who might you oh, be? Boy. How has this happened? Has God abandoned us for King Alant, failing to show proper respect? Oh, Mbasa. Oh, Mbasa. Yeah, that's kind of like their whole, you know, I don't know, like, God have mercy type saying. I don't know. Oh, Mbasa. See, the other NPC has not made it here yet. I'll just say. <laughs> yeah, I'm currently online. I'll probably play offline for the most part. Not because I'm worried about invasions or anything, but because I want to try and manipulate the world tendency, which is a mechanic that um, wasn't implemented the best, in my opinion. It's a very interesting idea. But I think they could have done a better job at implementing it. Alright. So the other characters have not made it down here yet. That's fine. Yeah, for the most part, I'm going to try to get each level to pure white world tendency. And then eventually try and do pure black. 
on all the different worlds to try and do the quests and other things. So what else we got here in the Nexus? <clears throat> I don't think we can talk to anybody else just yet, but the uh, Maiden in Black that you saw reviving us. The Candle Maiden. She's actually a very powerful demon. She's able to channel souls to uh, make us, the player character, stronger. So think of her as like a beta fire keeper. Yeah. Climb up here. Not really supposed to come up here yet. You're supposed to just jump straight into the level, but... This close is going to open after the first boss is defeated. Oops, well, I wasn't trying to do that. Oh well, now that I'm up here. Loading times are so fast, like, I'm not even going to have to edit those out, it looks like. At least not for that. Okay, well, that's all I can do for the time being in the Nexus. So I'm going to go ahead and call this part, and next time we'll pick up with the first level of the game, Volataria. Let's see here. How am I going to bring up gestures? What do we have? All kinds of stuff. Is there a wave? I don't see a wave. <laughs> kind of comes close. I don't know. I guess this is as good as any. This gesture was not originally in Demon Souls, but I like it. It's from Dark Souls 2. So we're going to use that for the time being. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you soon with more of the Demon Souls remake. And until then, y'all take care.